uh, your niche, let me just zoom in here for you. Um, you're going to get your team, et cetera, right? You get a bunch of different pieces to, to the online business, but the most important piece of all these different pieces of your business, which, which require like time, energy, and focus, the most important piece that, that reigns supreme above all is the content. I'll tell you why, because with good content, you can make a name for yourself. And with that name, you can sell just to what anything, to just what anyone helping anyone with anything, right? Look, think about Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt doesn't have a niche. <laughs> Brad Pitt doesn't have to worry about his messaging. It doesn't have to worry about an offer. Same goes with Oprah, right? Oprah doesn't, what's her niche? What's her messaging? What's, what's her offer? She could sell anything to anyone. She, uh, it's like, it's Oprah, it's Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Because they built a name for themselves with all the good content they've put out. So Brad Pitt, he just has to be himself, be himself and keep making good content. Bottom line is good content. So that's the power of really good content is like it just builds your name to a point where you can sell anything to anyone and help anyone with anything you want, okay? So when it comes to making sales and getting clients now for us mere mortals, who are not like Brad Pitt, Oprah, or Leonardo DiCaprio, whatever. Um, all the money we make, all the money you make, it starts with the content. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a few different sales flows, uh, a few different like sales processes that I've used in the past that my clients use. I see people online using right now, and you'll notice how they all start with content. And I'll, I'll show you this chart. Uh, SMV, by the way. You're gonna see the the terms the word SMV. That stands for social media value. And then you're also going to see the term CTA that stands for call to action. So let's look at this flow, for example. So here we start with social media value plus call to action that sends people to get a freebie, right? And then once people get the freebie on the next page, there might be an upsell. Like, so there might be like a free audiobook or sorry, a free ebook. And the next page might be upsell to an audiobook that gets them on email list. From the email list, they go to a webinar from the webinar, they get pitched a course at the end and then yeah, they, they, become a, they become a client and you can automate the whole process thereafter. So notice how that all starts with the content, right? More content, better content, more eyeballs in the content, more freebies, more upsells, more emails, more webinar, more course. It all starts with the social media though. And let's look at this sales process, super simple. It's just forget everything else. It's just social media value, freebie, upsell. If that was your whole business model, like forget this. If this was your whole business model, it's still, it's all starts with the content, okay? Uh, how about how about the next business model? How about if you just go social media call to a sale? If that's your business model, which a lot of people do. It's the same thing. It all starts with social media. Now, if you get rid of the social media, how are you supposed to get calls? If you're struggling to get calls booked or if you are struggling to make sales, well, it's probably because you're struggling to to put out good social media content with strong call to action. Okay, let's look at another sales process. I'll edit, undo all that, so we keep all that. Let's look at another one. This process works really, really well. This is like one of the most effective sales processes I've seen in recent times. It's absolutely crushing it in 2022 and will continue to crush it in 2023 and 2024 as well, I'm sure. Social media value plus call to action sends people to get a freebie. From that freebie, they join a Facebook group. From the Facebook group, they then get sent to DM. From the DM, they get on a call. From the call, a potential sale is made. Now, again, you may be looking at, at, your, at, your, uh, at your business and you may be like, how come, how come I'm not getting many DMs? How come I'm not getting many calls? How come I'm not making many sales? And you, then you got to pull back the curtain. You got to realize, oh, wow. The reason is because I'm not getting many people in my group. And the reason I'm not getting many people in my group is because I'm not getting many freebie downloads. The reason I'm not getting many freebie downloads is because I'm not getting, I'm not getting enough eyeballs on my social media content because it's just not good enough. I'm not putting out enough. Okay, but it all starts with that. So the better your content, the more views it's going to get. We know that. The more views it gets, the more action takers you're going to get. The more action takers you get, the more sales you make. Bottom line, more content or better content, more profit. In fact, there's an equation to prove this too. So with body weight, everyone knows that when you're trying to lose fat and look good, there's, there's an equation for weight loss. You guys know what that equation is? I'll you can post in the chat if you know what that equation is. Okay. 
It's an easy one. Everyone's going to get it. What's the equation for weight loss? You can risk being wrong. Just, just, just guess. Jason, eat less, move more. There we go. Shelly, consume less calories than you burn. Yeah, it's the equation of calories in, calories out. That's the equation. Okay, calories in, calories out. Um, and there's a direct correlation between the amount of calories you consume and the amount you weigh. Like if you just eat way more calories, if you keep your activity level the same, but you consume way more calories, you will, uh, you'll gain weight. And if you eat way less calories, you'll lose weight which means all you have to do to lose weight is just not eat at all, right? Which is why when people do a water fast, they don't eat anything. They all lose weight. It's an equation. Now with sales, I always wondered, I'm like, what's, what's the equation for sales? And can it be as simple as calories in calories out? Cause if there was an equation and it was that simple, then I would, I would crush it. I could, I could, I could make a lot of money. And after much study, I found the equation. Guys, any guesses what the equation is? I'll give it to you right here. The equation is niche eyeballs looking at you minus niche eyeballs not looking at you. So the more niche eyeballs that are looking at you minus the amount of niche eyeballs that are not looking at you, the more sales you're going to make. So there's a direct correlation between the amount of people watching you and the amount of money you're going to make if you have a, you know, if you have a decent offer. So all you got to do to make sales is make good content so you can get those eyeballs. Pretty cool. Now, there are three, you might want to write this down. There's three real di dimensions to a successful online coaching business. Three dimensions here. You've got the first dimension, which is like getting attention, just get people looking at you. Second piece is turning that attention into clients. We just did a training a couple of weeks ago talking about the whole sales flow. So if you haven't seen that, check out the replay of that inside of Vegan Creators. And then from there, you want to get results for clients. Those are really the three dimensions. You get attention, you turn, turn attention into clients, and then you get results for those clients. And then by getting results for your clients, that's going to help you get more attention because clients are going to talk and get testimonials, that sort of thing. So they all loop back around. Now, when it comes to getting attention, there's nothing more powerful than video content. If a photo can tell a thousand words, a video can tell a billion words. So inside of Vegan Business in a Weekend, we set up everything for our clients in two days. We spend a good like 10, 12 hours with them getting everything fully set up. And I always tell them, I say, hey, once you're set up with this business, like once, once you're open for business over the next 48 hours, you're only going to have two jobs. Work with your clients and create content based on what you learn with your clients. So you're working with clients, you're getting them results, you're helping them solve problems. And all these ideas are going to come up in the process. So you're helping clients, you're going to know what content to make. You just got to keep creating content, work with clients, create content, work with clients, get, create content. That's it. Because as for your sales process, once it's set up, you don't need to touch it. You purely need to focus on creating content and let the sales happen. So if we scroll up here and you can see these different sales processes, once you set up everything after the SMV plus the CTA, you don't need to touch it. It's just set up. You can put a lot of it on autopilot or you can completely delegate it to someone else. All you got to focus on is that first box in terms of the sales process. So that's pretty sweet, but here's the problem. This is why we're here today. Creating content is where most people get stuck. Type a five in the chat. If you feel like you're kind of stuck with the content creation piece, if you feel like this has been a bit of a struggle for you. Vanda, Judy, Tony Lee, Santana, Marilyn. Okay. YouTube is specifically. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, I think, I think, I think here's why I think it's because most people, they, they don't know what to talk about. Like what topic to make videos about. They don't know what to say when it comes to that topic. Even if they, they do know what topic that I'm not sure what exactly to say and they don't know how to make it look good. So it looks like crap, even if they're saying nice things. Type uh, me if you feel like you resonate with one of those pieces. Not sure what to talk about, not sure what to say, and I don't know how to make it look good. Okay, cool. Well, not cool, but we can we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that. So once we set our clients up, sometimes we never see them on social media. 
And they come back months later saying, oh, Ted, the business didn't work. And then we go on their YouTube, we go on their Instagram, we go on their Facebook, and there's no uploads. There's no content being put up. So when people say it didn't work, what, what I hear is like, I didn't do the work. And then when I see people crushing it online, making a lot of money, I'm never like, oh, it worked. Like the business we set up for them, it worked. I, in my mind, I'm like, oh, well, yeah, we set the business for them from the sales process and everything, but they're the ones doing the work. They're the ones uploading all the time. That's what it comes down to. It comes just down to uploading quality content. And when I say all the time, we're going to talk about the frequency of your uploads and all that in just a bit here. But just know that like, yeah, you can have the best business set up. You can have the best offer. You can have the best looking body. You can have the, you can have the best team, the best messaging, everything, the best logo. But if there's no content going up, there's no, it's not good content. So your stuff's not going to sell very well at all. Or I might not sell at all, period. It doesn't matter who you are. If your stuff's not going out, no one's seeing it, no sales. So I understand why creating content is tough. Um, if you don't know what to talk about, don't know what to say, don't know how to make it look good, you likely won't do it. So in this class, we're going to make it as easy as possible for you to create content. Plus, I'm going to show you how to create six months worth of content in just one day following six simple steps. Specifically, we're going to be talking about content for Facebook and YouTube, but just know this also works well for Instagram, LinkedIn, and almost anywhere else you're uploading content. And at the end, if you stick around, I'll show you one piece of video content that has gone on to make me over a million dollars and how you can create your own piece of content like that as well. Cool. Cool. So with this class, we're not creating content for the sake of creating content. Obviously, we want to create our content to assist us in making more sales and helping people in the process. So ideally, here, here's, here's, here's the thing. You might want to write this down. The content, every time, every time you upload content, you should have one goal in mind. And that is the goal of getting the viewer RIA. You want to get your viewer RIA. That stands for results in advance. I'll write that down here. Oh, man. RIA, results in advance. Means when they see your content, they should be able to use that content and go and get results without ever having to hire you or pay you anything. Get people results in advance. This makes it so easy to make sales because you've already proven to them that you can help them. And the easiest way to prove to someone that you can help them is to actually help them. <laughs> That's the easiest way to prove to someone. Just help them. So you want to get them results in advance. Okay. So let's get into how to get people to go from uh, just your content to clients, from cold to sold. The goal for the end of this class is for you to know how to create six months worth of content in just one day. So you don't have to worry about it for long periods of time and you can focus on other things. And if you want, maybe we can schedule that one day in so we can all create the six months worth together at the same time. If you guys want that, just type want in the chat and maybe we can set that up inside of vegan creators. Want, 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 want. Okay, cool. That way we can like batch create it all together. That'd be super sweet. So sweet. Looks like most of you want that. Cool. That would be inside of, uh, inside of vegan creators. So make sure if you haven't signed up for that yet, you signed up. As a disclaimer, dialing in your content that we're about to look at, it's, this is going to be part science and part art. And a lot of people don't talk about this. They just say like, oh, just do this and it'll work. But it's like, it's not as simple as just follow these six steps and you're good. Yes, I'm going to show you the six steps, but you have to get good. You got to practice this. Okay. It's like teaching someone, hey, do a handstand. All you got to do is just put your hands on the ground and put your feet above your head. You'll figure it out. Like, no, there's, you got to practice. You can know exactly what to do, but you still have to practice the handstand. You got to go to this. It takes practice. It's a skill. And like any other art form, the more you do it, the better you get and the more enjoyable it becomes with time. Now, lucky for you, best way to practice is to make a lot of it. And the aim of this class, like I said, is to show you how to create mass quantity of content. Is the production quality going to be high with what I'm teaching you here? No. It's not the point. Is it, is it going to go viral? Unlikely. It could, but it's unlikely. But will it allow you to create six months for the genuinely helpful content in one day? Yes. Yes, it will. Absolutely. And is it going to help you get clients? Without a doubt. And is it going to make you get better at creating content? Yeah, because you're going to be doing a hell of a lot of it. So 
Here's another one to write down. You got four goals with our content, four goals here. We want people to get to know us, get to like us, get to trust us, and get to take action. We want people to take action with our content. So if your content gets people to know who you are, like you, trust you, and take action, that is a huge success. You can't go much higher than that. That's like the pinnacle peak right there. So how do we pull this off? Well, if we want people to know us, then we got to get people to click on our videos and watch our videos, specifically for YouTube here, for example, right? You title it and your thumbnail needs to be really damn good. That's the only reason anyone's going to click on your video to find out, to, to, to know who you are. Once they do click though, to really get them to know us, like if they see your title and they see your thumbnail and they click on it, okay, they, they see you. But to really get them to know you, you got to show them your lifestyle. Show them a bit about how you live. That's why what I eat in a day videos work so well. Day in the life videos work so well because you're showing them your lifestyle. Okay. So to really get people to know you, you got to show them a bit about yourself, a lot about yourself. If you want them to like you, then show them how you're like them and always be helpful. Get it, get them those results in advance, just or at least offer to get them those results in advance, be helpful. But the, the affinity factor here, show them how we are like them. So one easy way to get people to like you is to show some compassion for animals. Who doesn't like someone who's compassionate for animals? Type a me if you love vegans who are compassionate towards animals. That's an easy way to get someone to like you. Like I love anyone who's compassionate towards animals it's hard not to i watched a movie the other day shawshank redemption and then there's, there's this part in the movie where this guy is in jail and he sees a guy eating food and the guy is eating food and he picks a worm out of his food and he's like all grossed out by this worm and then this other guy's like oh are you gonna eat that and this guy's like no he's like can i have it so he gives him this worm and you don't always going to do with the worm. It's kind of gross. So he takes this worm from this other guy and he opens his jacket and inside his jacket in jail, he's like hiding this little bird and he's like feeding the bird and keeping the bird alive. So he takes the worm and feeds it to the bird. He's like, there you go, little guy. And it's like the most beautiful scene in the movie. I think it's so beautiful. Uh, yeah. You're saying, oh, cute. Exactly. You can't help it. There's that empathy. So easy way after that scene, you, you, you like, you love that guy. And then the next scene, it shows him like many months later or something. And he's like, this bird's all grown up now. And he's like petting the bird and taking good care of the bird. So easy, easy way to get someone to like you. Um, and you're not taking advantage of being vegan. You're just showing people that you're vegan. And it's just an easy way to, to get someone to, to like you. Um, and then to trust, for someone to trust you, it's very easy to get someone to trust you when you tell them stories. Stories are more trust worthy than facts, which is really interesting. So I used to just tell a bunch of facts in my videos and people would be like, whatever, it's just a bunch of numbers, a bunch of statistics. But once I started sharing stories, that's when people were really like, oh, like Ted tells the truth because he told the story about how this thing happened. You know, it, it's, um, it's strange, but that's how it works. Stories are more trustworthy than facts. And then results. If you can show someone the results, like yesterday I did a video showing my aura ring results, so the difference between eating cooked food and eating raw food. And I showed objective measurable results from the aura ring. And how can you not trust me? I'm literally showing you like images, objective images of, of, of results that I've gotten from this aura ring. Plus when you show results that you've gotten for other people, like your clients and your students, it really goes a long way to get people to trust you as well. And if they, most importantly, if they get results, if the people watching get, get results in advance, right? Results in advance. Get people results in advance and they'll really trust you. To tell them to do something, they do it, they get a result, boom. They're going to trust you now. And then lastly, you want to get them to take action. How do you do that? You just offer them a freebie. Like a, uh, the best freebies, by the way, the best freebie is a something that is, highly congruent with your piece of content. So let's say your content is about weight loss via overcoming cravings late at night. That's me. That's the title of the video, how to overcome late night cravings to get a flat stomach or something. Well, the freebie would be top eight best foods to eat late at night. 
that fill you up that are also zero calories or close to zero calories. So you have a list of like all your top favorite veggies, like maybe it's like celery or dulse, seaweed, right? Like your top eight favorite craving busters, like carbonated water. It's such a helpful freebie, right? Type me if you would download that, if you're trying to overcome cravings late at night. And I was like, I just put together a free guide, shows you the top eight things, link in description. Yeah, because highly congruent and super helpful. So highly congruent, super helpful freebies, those always work well. And they build trust. They get people to like you. They get people to know you a bit more. So when you get people to take action, they know you, like you, and trust you even more. Okay. And I see a lot of people when they're making content, they lack these four goals here. They don't hit on all four goals. Uh, another type of action you want people to take is just, I mean, obviously you want them to download your freebie, but sometimes you just want them to comment down below so that you can send them something. Rather than getting them to click on a website and go do something there, you might say comment down below for this free thing. That's type of action. Another type of action is book a call. Someone books a call, they've taken action. Those are just various ways of getting people to take action, but you want to make sure you have one of these call to actions in your content, every piece of content. And you can put it, you can put it at the start, in the middle, at the end. I, I recommend putting them throughout the whole video, remind people. So let's create a game plan now for upload cadence, okay? Because every platform has like its own type of cadence that, where you want to be uploading. For example, like just a comparison, Instagram, I used to upload five to three pieces of content to Instagram every single day. I would never send out three to five emails a day, but I upload Instagram three to five times a day. So different, different platform, different cadence. Okay, so if you're just starting out, then you want to be doing YouTube daily. You want to be uploading content to your Facebook profile daily. You want to be posting your Facebook group three times a week. And you want to be on Instagram three times a day, if you're using Instagram at all, which by the way, don't feel like you need to be on Instagram. I only recommend Instagram if you either are really good at photography and that's like your thing, and you take beautiful food photos, or if you have a really nice body and that's part of your selling thing, like you're selling people on like having a fitter body. If you don't have like a really nice body or a you know, fit body, or you don't have awesome photos, like food photos or something, I don't recommend Instagram. It's just, it's a very beautiful picture focused platform. Um, yeah, there are exceptions, but for the most part, it's like you either need beautiful food photos or beautiful body photos, or like really good little short videos of you doing something amazing like gymnastics or training a dog or magic tricks or something like that. Okay. But even then you'd be better off on YouTube if you, if that's the case, but if you're doing Instagram three times a day and the reason for this, we've got four reasons for why we want this type of schedule cadence it's for, it's for you to get good. Just, you need to get practice at putting out content. So we want daily content getting out there. Uh, it's for you to feel really good about helping other people as well. Like if you feel like crap, you're not going to want to keep putting out content. You're not, you're not going to want to go on to be successful, but if you're actually feeling good helping others, you're going to want to keep doing this. You're just going to get addicted. Uh, you're going to get addicted. And then it's also, again, to get people to know, like, and trust you just by helping them get results in advance and showing up every day for them. And it's for you to build your catalog. A lot of people don't have a content catalog. And again, it's like I said, like we help people set their business and vegan business in a weekend. And like a month goes by and there's like no content from them. They don't have a catalog. And so it's really hard to get clients or like to team up with a collaboration partner or something. If you don't have a content catalog, cause you're like, you're like a nobody, you know? So if you don't want to be, if you don't want to be a nobody, have a catalog, a catalog is just a bunch of posts, a bunch, a bunch of videos where people can like scroll down and see all your stuff three times a day on Instagram. Yep. So eventually, again, this is if you're just starting out, but eventually uh, YouTube, you can do weekly. Facebook profile, you still want to do daily. if not like every other day. Facebook group, still doing three times a week. And Instagram, once a day is going to be fine, if at all. Okay, so that's the upload cadence. Now let's talk about types of content. On Facebook, you want four types of group and profile posts. Now, the difference, I'll talk about the difference right here, actually. Profile posts. It can be more personal. It can be more about you. And the group posts should really be about 
the group and really helping them. So your profile photos don't always need to be about helping people. The profile posts can, oftentimes it could be like a picture of you and your daughter at the park or something. And just like, just having fun on a Saturday, loving my day off. That, that does really well because it creates affinity with the people looking at you. They're like, oh, I also have a daughter. Or it gets people to see your lifestyle a bit more. Be like, oh, wow, this person is actually like a family person. Or, oh, wow, it's so cute how they're connecting with their daughter. So if profile photos can be more about you. Within the group photos or group posts should really be about helping, 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 helping. Uh, so, yeah, the, the character piece is like letting them know about you and your top on topic beliefs. So, what's an on topic belief? This, this one works especially well on profile posts, doing like character type of posts. So, for example, uh, yesterday I made a, or two days ago, I made a post on Facebook. And this is, this is like a perfect example of the type of content I'm talking about. So you want to post controversial on topic beliefs. So if you're in the health slash vegan space and you help people with, with their health and well being, you might post something like I posted, which is, I said, and, and, and a lot of you in here right now, there's 28 of you watching, a lot of you may disagree with me. In fact, I want you to type disagree with me right now if you disagree with me on this subject. Type agree if you do agree. My guess is that most people are going to disagree with me on this, and that's okay. I'm okay with people disagreeing with me because this is my on-topic belief when it comes to veganism. And I said, mucoid plaque does not exist. Now, agree or disagree? I'm, I'm stoked to see the, the, the comments here. Most people on Facebook disagree. It's just my belief that mucoid plaque does not exist. Agree, agree, as an area, it does exist. There we go, perfect. So this is, this is great. I want this divide. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to create this conversation. Sherry's saying disagree, perfect. Disagreeing, perfect. I love it. It's good. We want, we want this friendly disagreement. This shows people that it shows people where you stand on a certain topic. Now, for me, making that post it's not going to do as well because I'm more in like the entrepreneurship space and mucoid plaque doesn't really have anything to do with entrepreneurship, but because most of my following follow me for like dietary advice still, I wanted to throw that post out there to, to, to shake some stuff up, stir some stuff up. And it got like hundreds of comments now. So we can already see like a split. Some people saying agree. Some people, some people say disagree. Um, cool. That's great. And, and look, a lot of you didn't even vote. Only like four or five people vote. Maybe some people are afraid to vote because they go, well, I don't, I don't want to like make my stance public, right? So doing these types of posts, they will, they, they will do so good for you, let, letting your people know where you stand. Like another thing I post a lot about, I say fruit is the only food that humans should be eating with. There's no consequences. I was like, I was like I'm like every other fruit that every, any other food that you eat has negative consequences. That's a pretty controversial thing because some people say, oh, there's no consequences to potatoes or rice or something, but I definitely believe there is. Another one that, that really separated me from the pack is I would say over and over and over again, back in the day when I was making a lot of diet videos, I said, cooked food is addictive. Cooked food is, a, I say, cooked food is a drug. And it, that allowed me to get so many clients because everyone came to me to overcome their addiction. People were coming to me and like my number one client was someone who was a cooked food addict. So when you are very polarizing with your opinions on certain things on topic, they got to be on topic. Like I wouldn't make a post about saying like 9-11 is an inside job. It's got nothing to do with diet, right? And, or I may believe that, uh, for example, Will Smith shouldn't have slapped Chris Rock or something. Who cares? It's completely off topic. So you don't want to get like political on your feed and your posts and your videos by talking about your opinions that have nothing to do with your, with your thing that you're helping people with. Does that make sense? Type sense, if that makes sense, and then we'll move on. Sense, 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 sense. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Good. That's a game changer. A lot of people do are afraid to do that. And they're just, they want to be too like politically correct. And they're just boring. They're just lame. You just gloss over them. You're like, oh, you're just a regular, like you're just like everybody else. This makes it. I saw Tony Lee saying you want to stand up from the noise. This makes it so you stand up from all the noise. 
I don't, I, I don't know anyone at the time when I was making all those fruitarian videos, I don't know anyone else who was talking so much shit about cooked food than me. I was like the biggest cooked food shit talker. I was loud too. I was saying cooked food is 100% drug. If you're eating it, you're addicted. You don't even know it. I was like, if you don't think cooked food's addictive, try quitting. So many videos about it. And it just really like, it just, it, whoever didn't believe that wouldn't follow me. And so I had a huge following of everyone who believed in the same thing as me. So yeah, you're going to lose some people. That's totally fine. But the people who stick with you are going to be so much stronger and so much more likely to want to work with you as a coach. Okay. Next is affinity. You just show them how you're like them. So again, like you show them how you're vegan. Uh, you show them how you also uh, like to go to bed early. You show them how you also really care about your, your health, things like that. Or you should, maybe if you're, if you're a Christian, maybe you show them how you're Christian. Um, yeah. Authority. This is where you teach them something. This is where you show them, Hey, I know something that's that most people don't know. And I know something that can really help you solve some problems. If you know something that can help someone solve a problem, you are now in the authority position. And authority doesn't mean like you're certified or you're like a professional. It just means that you know something they don't. So when it comes to when it comes to learning anything new, there's going to be a lot of authority figures out there for people. Right? When you first got into veganism, like everybody was an authority. And then after a while, you start to learn a lot and a lot and a lot. And there's like less authority figures because like you realize like you pretty much know what a lot of them know. But you now become the authority figure for people in your family and your friend circle and everything, right? So just teaching people something turns you into an authority figure. And then action is so simple. You just get someone to say, comment below, get the freebie, book a call. Boom. Okay. Uh, on YouTube, there's going to be three types of videos. And with, it, with each three type of video or with each type of video here, you're going to have a call to action at the end. So with your character videos, again, that's where you let people know about you and your on-topic beliefs. Same as the, the Facebook one. Affinity, same thing. You're like them. And authority, you teach them something. That's it. But, so with Facebook, there's those four types. And the only difference is that with Facebook, you have a whole separate post just for action posts. We do so many of these. I'll show you in real time here. Our Facebook group. We do so many action posts. We do at least, look at this one. Uh, new training Saturday. You want to come? Uh, just made a training. Who wants to see it? These are action posts. Live today, you want to come? Going live, want to come? Uh, where's, where's a good freebie? Here, perfect, perfect example of freebie. Hosted an epic workshop on how to create beautiful content in Canva. Who wants the replay? 215 comments. Even if 100 of those were us replying, which they're not, uh, there's at least 100 comments from there from people saying, yes, I want this. Great example of a freebie, uh, of, of, of an action post. Okay, so with, with YouTube, it's the same three types of posts, but you're just not doing like a video straight up saying action. Those videos suck on YouTube. Those videos are considered really salesy if it's just a purely like take action type of video. And I've done them before. I've done them before on YouTube. So I, I'm speaking from experience here. They suck. You're much better off just adding action to the end or halfway through or even the start of each video, but really making the video about character, affinity, or authority. So... Yesterday, I was speaking with a friend about content, and we spoke about how with certain people, you'd watch anything they put out because you like their vibe, right? So I was saying I gave like Leonardo DiCaprio as an example. Like I would watch any Leonardo DiCaprio video or any video from a guy named Russ, an artist. Type the person that you would watch any video from, any type of interview, any type of behind the scenes, any type of story. Like you're just a fan. You watch anything they put out. Tony Lee says, Ted, I appreciate that. Who else? Who, who, who's the person that you'd watch anything from? Joe Dispenza, Mike Arnstein, the, the f future, Dr. Robert Morris, Vanda, thanks, appreciate that. Anything. Lauren, Geraldo, cool. So Alan Watts, Greg Braden, yeah, it doesn't matter what they put out, you're going to watch it, right? So they've reached a certain place in your heart where you'd watch them do anything. And Eventually, you can get there too. 
you can become just like them in the sense that there's gonna be people like people said me for example like to me that's crazy because it's always gonna be crazy but you're gonna you're gonna make a video when like they like this too you might talk about something like this and people are gonna say you're the only person i want to watch um and it's not going to be about what you say in the video it's just gonna be about you showing up and saying what's on your mind people are gonna like almost everything you say it's just gonna be really natural and it's like in a relationship like when you're in a good relationship with someone do you think like let's say you have a partner right do you think that like every morning when you wake up and you go talk to that partner do you think about what you're going to say to them and how you should approach them with certain things? And if you should say something differently or like what topic you should talk about with that, with that partner? No, you just show up and you just talk. People like you for you. Your partner likes you for you and vice versa. Your partner is definitely not scheming up a script to talk to you in the morning. You know, that'd be weird. So eventually you create this point where you have a genuine relationship with your audience where you can just show up and be you and they're going to they're gonna dig it or they're not. Okay. So you guys ready for the six steps now to create the six months worth of content in one day? You guys ready? Type six steps if you're ready and you want these already. Okay. Judy says six stirps. We're going to get to the six stirps here. First, we're going to go over high level overview just to make sure there's no confusion. Then we're going to dive into details. All right. So high level overview. Here we are. Step one, plan your content. Plan your content. I'm just going to plan it out. This means like writing it down on paper, writing it down on Google Doc. Plan it out. Step two, batch create that, like batch film or batch write. Okay, if you just do steps one and two, woo, a lot of the work is already done. Next though, we're going to create an intro and outro clip for your videos. Step four is to chop up your video. So when we batch create, we're going to film like a, potentially like a two hour video, two hour long video, nonstop. And so by the time we get to step four, we're going to chop that video up into little clips. Step five is to create thumbnails for each of those videos. And step six is to upload it and schedule it for the next six months. Okay. So who feels like this is realistic and this is possible? Possible. Yep. Okay, cool. And you notice how it's like not revolutionary. It's just kind of maybe wise kind of smart thing to do. If you were to create six months worth of content, this is probably what you would do. Okay. So let's go into a bit of a deep dive into each step. Now, when it comes to planning out your content, you want to have a goal here to hit 180 pieces of content in total, two types of content we're going for videos and written. If you're into photography, you can also add photos to this as well. So maybe you're going to have like 90 photos, 45 videos, 45 written pieces or something like that. Okay. So when you're clear on the two types, or when you're clear on the types of content that you want to, you're going to write this down, by the way, this is interactive. So write, write all this down in your notebook or on a Google doc or something. When you're clear on the two types or the three types that you want to make, Next step, you're going to come up with ideas for the actual content. So we're going to do this, this piece together. So I like to always start with your course in mind, because ultimately you're creating this content. So people sign up for your course or coaching program, correct? Type correct if I'm correct. People are watching your content, then they're going to want to buy your course or coaching program. So there should probably be some congruency there. If your course or coaching program is about how to succeed on a vegan diet, Content isn't going to be about the best way to fly a kite. Doesn't make sense. So we make the content around the type of content that's in our course or coaching program. So I like to start by coming up. What are the four phases of your course? And then what are like five how-to lessons for each phase? It's a great place to start. It gives us some easy 20 how-to videos. So um, we can do this together, actually. Let's say phase one of our course is mindset. And let's say this course, i make this up. Let's say their course is we're going to help people succeed on a vegan diet. Phase one is mindset. Understanding like the ethics of, and why we're doing this. Phase two is like the lifestyle. So maybe like talking about like the fashion, they're going to need to wear like um, non-leather clothes and stuff like that. Uh, phase three, we'll talk about the diet. And then phase four is like the, the fitness, how to, how to get fit 
so that they actually look good on a vegan diet and feel good as well. So they don't end up like a overweight vegan. So now we need to break up each phase into five lessons. So let's start. We'll do, we'll do one of these together. I'll need your crowd participation here. Give me mindset lesson number one. I'll type in the chat as well. Um, ethics of a vegan diet. Oh, actually, undo, 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 undo. Has to start with how to. We need a how to lesson. So we need a how to. How to, and then something compelling here for mindset. Hmm. How to make tasty vegan snacks. Okay. Um, uh, Tony, that would probably be in the diet section. We're just doing mindset right now. Marilyn, how to get your mind ready to go vegan. Cool. How to deal with others' opinions. Cool. How to know if a vegan diet is right for you. Love that one. Wow, who came up with that one? Uh, morning and night routine. Okay, a routine, that's, that's new. I like it though. But that would probably be more lifestyle. How to be vegan on a budget. That would probably be in the diet section maybe. Or eh, it might work for mindset, but how to stop procrastinating. Okay. How to commit to a vegan diet. I like that. How to fully commit to a vegan diet. There we go. I like that. How to have the best morning routine and practice for sex with Yelena. That would be lifestyle. We're thinking, we're talking about mindset here. How to get your family on board there. I, that's maybe lifestyle, maybe mindset. I'm not sure how to make the decision to be vegan. I like that. How to thrive. Even if your family doesn't support you. Yeah. I like that. How to beat cravings. That might be diet. How to create a vision and meditation practice. No, how to think like a vegan. Well, I like that. Done. That's perfect. How to think like a vegan. That's number uno. Ding, ding, ding. How to cope without meat. Cool. How do vegans think? Cool. How to stay committed even when you feel like quitting. Great. Okay. Do we agree that we came up with at least five decent ones for that? We could piece something together for that. We come up with five good videos. Yeah. Okay. So we just do that five times. How to think like a vegan. How to commit to a vegan diet, how to make sure a vegan diet is right for you. We just come, those are five videos. And then we do the same thing for lifestyle. I saw some lifestyle ones, which would be how to optimize your morning and evening routine on a vegan diet, how to get your family on board on a vegan diet, the certain lifestyle ones. And then we go into diet, which is like how to do it on a budget, how to always stay stocked up. Give me, uh, give me three more good ones for diet, how to for diet. How to curb the cravings, perfect. Yeah. How to, oh, this is a good one. How to make sure you get all your nutrients. How to make sure you get all your nutrients, how to grocery shop, how to cook tofu, how to lose weight and eat right, how to meal plan. Yes, but you see, this part's easy for you guys. You guys just flow with diet. Now, as easy as it is for you to flow with the diet side of things, oh, you guys are just banging them out here. It's awesome. See how, see how easy it is here? Just flowing. It's going to get that easy too. The more you think about each of these pieces has to stay satisfied. Love this. How to avoid food spoilage. Yeah. Really good. Okay. So now those are all really good titles for videos. Really, really good. What's in the pantry. Yeah. Okay. So you do that five times for each thing in your course. And now not only is it going to make it so that you learn yourself as you teach this a lot more, but it's going to make it so that you become an authority figure. So when people see your videos, they're like, oh, wow, this person really knows what they're talking about. They're super helpful. I would love to hear you guys' tips. In fact, a client of ours made a video a few months ago talking about how she stocks up her fruit and her food. And I learned a lot. She talked about how like certain things you shouldn't keep in the fridge and certain things. Like, I think it was like, you shouldn't put your onions and potatoes beside each other. I was like, I didn't know that. So cool tips like that. Now, another type of video to make, you want to come up with 10. So, so this right here gives us 20, right? Five times four is 20. We got 20 videos there. And by the way, this planning phase, this should take you about an hour or two. This is like the prep phase. You want to plan for a good hour or two with all these. 
Okay, we're coming up with 180 pieces, so it's going to take a couple hours. But another one is 10 speed tips to do things faster. So let's come up with three in the chat right now. When it comes to succeeding on a vegan diet, what could we do faster? How to make a smoothie in less than two minutes. How to make a salad in less than two minutes. How to clean your blender in 30 seconds. Cut veggies for a week. Nice. Shop vegan online. Yeah, cool. Beautiful. What else? Oh, how to clean your entire kitchen in under five minutes. Love it. You guys are awesome. How to properly peel bananas. Doug, dude, I've been, my banana peeling game has changed recently. It's, it's, it's been, it's been revolutionary. Only took me 12 years to figure it out. I never peel a banana from the top any, or the, the top anymore from the stem part. Never. I always just stick my thumb on the little nub at the bottom and peel from the bottom. So much better. Amy peels three at a time. There we go. Amy, how to peel three bananas at a time. That's a video. Is this fun? You guys come out with these ideas. You guys are cranking them out. Yes. Okay, cool. Well, let's get the fun part. You spent two hours in this fun part. Next, we're going to come up with 10 tools to make things faster or easier. So we'll talk, we do like product reviews, for example. Um, you might have a, let's come up with just 10 tools, cutting board, knife, spiralizer, obviously blender. Um, ooh, please, how to, I need to, how to clean, I, no one needs, someone needs to make this. How to clean a juicer fast. Food press has a garlic press. There we go. See, I would never even thought of a garlic press. Great idea. Um, ooh, vacuum. Someone say this already. Vacuum blender. Vacuum blender is a game changer. Mandolin. I don't know what a mandolin is. I forget. But anyways, those are 10 tools that make things faster. And you could do like a little review on them. And you can post the affiliate link in the description so that when people like that, they can go buy that same product that you use and you can make commission on that. Citrus juicer, yeah, boom, sweet. Next is 10 mistakes. Let's write out one mistake that we've made in the past that other people should avoid. Not eating enough. Not eating enough was a mistake. Make sure top of Vitamix is put on before you hit blend. Good one, Marilyn. Putting our bananas with fresh bananas. No over its fat for six months. That was a mistake, Jason? No overts for six months? Not eating enough. Ooh, I know, good one. Mixing fat with fruit or sugar. Eating too soon before bed. Yeah, good one. It's a good mistake. Overconsumption of nuts and fats. Yes, Shelly, good one. Breaking my fast with dense cooked foods. Ooh, good one, Darlene. Late night nuts. Yeah, Doug says those lead, those lead to nightmares. Um, I was training 18 and a half hours a week. Overtraining. There we go. So 10 mistakes. Now, guys, type helpful in the chat if you feel like these videos would be helpful for people. Dude, and if you're helpful, guess what? They're going to want to sign up because they know you're helpful. So next, we want to come up with 10 lies, myths, limiting beliefs. So let's type, let's type one thing that we used to believe or that certain people are, are believing. Like, for example, right now, I'll, I'll put it. Um, mucoid plaque and this is where you can get kind of controversial lack of protein good it's it's a, it's 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 a lie to you it's a myth to you it's a limiting belief to you but to them it may be like what they believe now so with all these I'll let you type them out but here's the secret with all these whenever you talk about these you always want to let people know that you also used to believe the same thing so when it comes to mucoid plaque i used to believe mucoid plaque was a thing I would check my stool. I would do these cleanses. And I would look in the toilet. Look, I would put the um, chopstick in there to try and find that mucoid plaque thing. So I, I was full on into it. And then I did more research and I found out that maybe I was maybe I was wrong. And now here's what I believe. Humans need cooked food. Protein comes from meat. Bananas are fattening. That's a funny one. Uh, James, what's up, man? Change your chat settings to everyone. That way everyone can see what you're saying. Salad is just water. Sugar from fruit is bad. I'll be missing flavor if I only eat plants. Yeah, good one. Sweet. Now, again, the, these are really 
awesome because if you make videos about this type of stuff, what you're doing is you're training your audience to think how they need to think in order to succeed, in order to do business with you. Because if they think that they're going to be missing flavor, why would they work with you? They won't. If they think salad is just water, why would they buy your program and eat salad? They won't. If they think bananas are fattening, they're not going to sign up for your program. If they think humans need cooked food, they're not going to sign up for your program. So this is you creating clients. When you talk about the myths, limiting beliefs, and lies, you are creating clients. You're getting them to think differently. So one, one way I've done this before in the past that worked really, really well is I talked about how you should never create a course and then sell it. You should always sell your course before you create it. This got me so many clients because everyone before was thinking, oh, Ted, I'll start working with you once I build my course. But then I taught them the story of how I tried to do that and I built this big course, tried to sell it and it didn't work that well. But then the other time I sold it first and then I built it and it sold way more and it was way better because I built it with the client at the same time. And when people heard that story, they're like, they're like, oh, screw making a course. I'll just sign up with Ted now and I'll build it once I make my first sale. So very, very effective. This, the, the talking about these help create clients. Okay, cool. So 10 things you quit. Like, give me one, give me something that you quit. That, and that's congruent with what you're helping people with. Like, you're not going to say I quit watching TV or something if it has nothing to do with diet. Quit cheese, okay. Dairy, uh, I quit uh, late nights. I quit using leather. I quit eating honey. What else did I quit? Um, hanging around a bunch of meat eaters at the dinner table. Quitting oil. Good one. Takeaways. Someone said caffeine. Alcohol, coffee. Yep, cool. So now, talking about why you quit this stuff. It, it makes people, it, it puts you up on a pedestal in a way because people are like, wow, Tony Lee can stop eating after 6 p.m. She's so cool. And here they are like eating after like 6, they're at like a 6, 630 at night. And they're like, oh, I wish I could be like Tony Lee. Or if you say you quit um, cooked food, meanwhile, they're eating cooked food. They're like, oh, I wish I could be more like Dr. Doug Graham. You know, I wish I could be like, more like I wish I could be more like Jason. So when you talk about what you're quitting, you're showing people like, hey, like the better life is possible and you might not be there yet, but I could probably help you get there because I'm here now, obviously. Cool. So before we get into this, do you guys feel like uh, if you were to make these types of videos, you could really change people's lives for the better without needing some certification? You're just teaching from your own experience. Yes, definitely. Yes, yes. We. Star eyes. Perfect emoji. Cool. Okay. Now we want to come up with 50 FAQ. So when we make these videos, people are going to have questions for us. But, but, but what about, what about, what about, what about, what about this? What about this? What about this? Is this going to work for me? Is it going to work for my son? Is this going to work for so and so? Let's come up with at least a couple of questions each for anything we've just talked about. What are some questions that we know we're going to get? Where do I get my protein? Obvious one. Where do I get my calcium? How is it full of smoothie? Yeah. How many bananas do you put in your smoothie? Do you eat before workout? Yeah. How do you make salad taste better? Yeah. Um, how, how do I maintain muscle? Yeah. Good one. How do I say it's a good one? How do I say it's social? Awesome. These are all good facts. Will I be hungry all the time? Yeah. How to avoid cravings. How many mangoes? It's a funny one. How many mangoes do I have in a mono meal? What's, what's the number? Yeah. I need an exact number of mangoes. And you tell them 10 mangoes and then they go buy those like mini mangoes. How do I call them? Yeah. How do I handle opposition? Yeah. How do I, how do I eat out? How do I eat socially? Yeah. So these FAQs, what's cool about them is that 
these work really well for Instagram captions. They work really well for Instagram stories and highlights. And they make really good little quick YouTube videos. You can answer these in like less than two, three minutes each. Make just bang out a bunch of YouTube videos answering all these. And they make for great emails. Sending out just an email answering top three questions of the week or something. Okay. Cool. So now you're going to go do some homework right now. I'll give you guys three minutes to come back with a quote that you feel backs up and supports your points as a vegan. So go on Google and type famous vegan quotes or something. The how-to is very instructional, Amy. It's very step-by-step. -step. And the FAQ is just generally speaking, here's my answer. But good question. This is a great one by Russell Brand. I made a post on Facebook the other day with a quote. And I said, the question is not, can they reason, nor can they talk, but rather, can they suffer? Because when I heard this quote, it hit me so hard. So I posted it. Um, we'll get some good quotes coming in. I don't see why someone should lose their life just so you can have a snack. Yes. The food you eat can either be the safest and most powerful form of medicine or the slowest form of poison. Nice. God said, behold, I've given you every plant yielding seed on the face of the earth and every tree. Yes. Direction, not speed is the greatest aspect of learning to succeed. Awesome. Jason, I was listening to a, a rapper this morning and he's got this line in the song and he's like, y'all are going nowhere fast. Here's some advice you should heed. Direction is more important than speed. He must have got that from Dr. Doug. <laughs> Doug's, got a, Doug's got a lot of rhymes, man. Doug's got a lot of rhymes. One of my favorite one is the mono meal is the ultimate ideal. Yeah, you guys want some quotes? Go get the 801010 book and uh, just copy paste all the stuff out of Doug's book and just give them credit. And there's your quotes. Cool. So that's, uh, that's 50 quotes. Next is 30. You want to come up with 30 who wants what post? These are like my favorite. I love writing these. These are like, Hey, just put together this thing. Who wants it? I'll show you some examples. Who wants to lose 10 pounds before summer? Uh, yeah, that'd be a good one. That'd be a good one. This is simple. It's like, uh, hey, new life training. You want to come? Just made a training. Who wants to see it? Um, who wants the replay? Right? I showed you guys a few of these. Who wants my brand new time management? Who wants it? Who wants what? Who wants my Monday to Friday daily to-do list? I asked 21 millionaires what their one piece of advice is for making a million bucks online. Who wants to see their answers? Okay, and look at the responses. Like, it's crazy. People love this. People love this. So type in the chat, who wants what? And I will grade it. Yelena, you might change that to something like, just helped a client lose 10 pounds in 10 days. Who wants to see how? That would be so powerful. Just helped a client lose 10 pounds in 10 days. Who wants to see how? Like, duh, everybody wants to see how you did it. That'd be awesome. Obviously you have to alter the results, but yeah, that'd be a really good one. Or I just, just dropped five minutes off my 5k time who wants to see how just help the client just help just help the client stop bloating 
who wants that? Um, I'd say something like, just helped a client completely eliminate bloating. Want to know how? Uh, Tony, so we want to start out with some, saying something like, hey, I have this thing, who wants it? So you'd say like, um, just found a way to sleep two hours less while still having way more energy. Who wants to know how? Helped a client quit meat and dairy. Who wants to know how? See, the issue with that one, Darlene, is that that one, there's no inherent benefit. So you'd instead, you'd say, just helped a client clear their acne. Who wants to know how? And then the how is they quit meat and dairy. You don't want to give like the process away in the question. The process is quitting meat and dairy. The promise is like getting rid of acne. James, um, who wants to radically change their life in less than 30 days. That's way too vague. We don't want to have any vagueness here. We want to be very specific. So just helped a client find their soulmate in less than a month. Who wants to be next? That would be so good. Someone should definitely use that one. That one's freaking awesome. Just helped a client find their soulmate in less than 30 days. Who wants to be next? So good. See, Marilyn, um, you don't want to start out with saying who wants this thing. You want to start out by saying like, I got this thing. Who wants it? So just made, I, I just made the world's tastiest breakfast in under two minutes. Who wants the recipe? Boom. Just helped a client heal hemorrhoids, want to see how that one might be an issue because people might be embarrassed of admitting they have hemorrhoids. You could say, send me a DM to learn how. Or if it's like something controversial, like, or like risky to make public, like just helped a client overcome an abusive relationship, DM me to learn how. Just lost three pounds in a week. Who wants the exact breakdown of what I ate? Yeah, who wants the exact breakdown of everything I ate? Yeah. Just helped a client become a healthy vegan for the last... Healthy vegan is too vague. We don't want healthy vegans, too vague. Uh, you'd be more specific. So just helped a client overcome chronic indigestion. Send me a DM if you want to learn how. Yeah, Edith, same thing. We don't want to start with who wants... We want to say, I got something. Who wants it? Is this, is this, is this, is this make, uh, is this, is this making sense for people? Are you guys getting this? Yay? Nay? <laughs> Just me thinking away. Week, who wants to be next? Yeah. Yes. Made a juice to get rid of. Yes. Yeah, see, Darlene, again, you're giving away the process. You don't want to give away the process. You want to say, just got rid of a cold in less than 24 hours. Who wants to know exactly how, or who wants the elixir? Who wants the elixir? I just learned how to. Yeah. Maybe that works too. How do we send the video by giving the email to us? You can just send them a DM or you could just reply to their comment with a link, but DMs work well. Uh, okay. So before we move on, I've got the secret to look and feel amazing. Who wants it? Um, it's in the right direction. Could use some tweaking. Uh, for that one, Azaria, I'd say something like, uh, I was able to drop over 40 pounds without any willpower and have a crazy before and after as a result. Who wants to be next? Or who wants to know how I did it? Or who? Who wants to transform as well? I just, you could say like, I completely transformed how I look in less than 40 days. Who else wants to transform? Boom. That's a good one. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Now, before we move on, um, scale of one to 10, how helpful has today been so far? 10 being like insane. Nine being like, eh, it's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> you guys are, you guys are, uh, you guys are, you guys are nice. Wow. So. 
11, 1,000, 10, 12, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Wow. When, when 10 out of 10 is the lowest score, um, that means you got a good crowd. Appreciate you guys. The reason I ask is because like, I want to, I'll just be open and transparent with you guys. I, before this call, I was like, I don't know if they're going to get much out of it. Like, I hope they get much out of it. I hope they get some stuff out of it. But I don't know. What if like, it's a waste of time. I'm, I'm happy to give a refund if they don't like it, but I hope they get something from it. So like there's self doubt, but I take action anyway. And I'm like, just go for it. Just go for it. So if you're having self doubt, just go for it. Just go for it. Just help, help, help. Like my only intention is to show up here today and help. So if that's the intention, I don't know if you can lose. I don't know if you can lose if your truest intention is to help. If your intention is to like get something from people, yeah, you can lose. And people are like, oh, I don't know, it wasn't that good. They were kind of salesy. They kind of held back. But if you don't hold anything back, there's no bait and switch. It's just give, 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 help, help, help. I don't know if you can score lower than a 10, especially if you know what you're talking about. So all I've done so far is just give you, you know, a few tips and tricks and strategies that I, I know work. And you guys seem to think it's super freaking helpful. So um, just know that if you're experiencing self-doubt or like lack of confidence, you're like not sure if your stuff's, you know, the best, um, just go for it. Just go for it. So uh, what else we got? Okay. So now well, we got, we got a ways to go. Who needs to take a little pee break, maybe a two minute pee break and we'll come back. Cause we, we got a little ways to go. Pee break. Okay. Take a pee break. I'll come back. I'll try to finish in the next 20 minutes or so, but I don't know. I kind of ramble a bit. We'll be back in two minutes. All right. Pee break. Let's go. All right, scroll up to phases. 
phases. You mean these? I don't know what phases you mean. We've covered a lot. Okay, count to 200, not 180. Amy, Amy, uh, I don't know. I mean, it might be 200, but I like to over deliver. <laughs> so what you want to do next is now that we have our ideas, by the way, type a one if we can resume. Okay, we're going to resume. <clears throat> now that you have your ideas, you need to go on YouTube. Okay, well, I'll tell you a story about why. See, this is, this is, here's, a, here's a tip. Whenever you're teaching someone something, you could tell them what to do, or you could tell them a story. When you tell them a story, they're going to tell themselves what to do. But if you tell them what to do, they might be like, oh, that's nice, but eh. But if you tell them a story, they're going to be like, oh my God, like, I'm definitely going to do that. So here's the story. You can have the best idea. I, I, I've, I've had some great ideas for YouTube videos. And so what I do is I make the video and I'm like, this video is awesome. It's super helpful. Like it's something I wish I had when I was just starting out. So I'm stoked. It's going to be awesome. People are going to love it. So I put it out there, put it on YouTube. I go to bed. I wake up expecting like thousands of views and it's got like a couple hundred or like less, got like a hundred or less. I'm like, well, it sucks. How come no one's watching it? And then I put out like another video that I'm like, oh, like I, I didn't think it was that good, but I'll put it out there and see what happens. And it ends up doing really, really well. And I'm like, what the heck? How come some videos are doing super well and some like that I think are really good, they suck. And it turns out that the reason my, some of my videos do really, really well is because I have a really good title. Sometimes my titles suck. I just like make them up and just throw them up and whatever. And they'd suck. And so people don't click on them. The title might be like, you need to see this because that's how I feel. But the title isn't about what you feel. The title is about what people are searching. So now what I do is I go on YouTube and let's say we want a video about how to eat, how to lose weight on a vegan diet. Okay. So we go, how to lose weight on a vegan diet. And we see what ranks the highest by searching and then sorting. So the way to sort is you go filters and you go view count. And now look at that diet plan to lose weight fast. That's in Hindi. You want to pick like an English one. There we go. High protein vegan meal prep. It's a good one. Uh, high protein breakfast for weight loss. We want vegan though, right? Yeah. Weight loss, Indian weight loss diet. We want vegan. I went vegan for 30 days. Health results shocked me. There we go. Look at that. See, there's our title. You could say I went vegan for whatever. The results shocked me. 13 healthy vegan recipes for weight loss. Proven title. Guys, these are proven titles. So Doug saying I wrote five books that I thought would rock and none did. 811 wasn't supposed to take off, but it did but the title sucks. Would I have done better with a better title? Do you think? So there's definitely more to it than just the title, but when it comes, we're talking about YouTube algorithm here, books, I don't understand the world of books, but when it comes to YouTube, I understand very well is that there's two things that are most important to get this amount of views. Number one, or three things, three, there's only three things. You want to write this down. Three things will determine if your video will do well. Number one, the title. How do you pick a good title? You go and you see what's already crushing it as a title. Number two, the thumbnail. How do you know what thumbnail is going to go do well? You go and look and see which thumbnails are already doing very, very well. Third thing is, can you keep their attention when they click? How do you keep someone's attention when they click? Go and watch some of the top videos and see how they're doing it. One way to keep someone's attention is to tell stories. Make a bold promise at the start of the video about how this video is really going to help them get a highly desirable end result. That's your bold promise. When you tell a story of how you're able to get that result or how so-and-so was able to get that result. And at the end, give them away something for free. But that's how you keep their attention. Make a bold promise and then you tell a story throughout. And you on YouTube, you need, you know, beautiful B-roll as well helps. Shots of food. Look at that. Boom. People love that. They can't resist. Look at that. They can't resist. Right? That's why it's 7.6 million. So 
uh, those are the three factors. Does it get the click because the title and thumbnail? And does it retain attention because of what's in it, the story and the promise at the start? Okay. So take your idea and don't just throw it up on YouTube. Go and search every single idea. So you're going to be doing this like, uh, you're not making 100, 180 YouTube videos, by the way. Because some of these aren't, aren't YouTube videos. Like the FAQ. Oh, the FAQ can be videos. The quotes are not YouTube videos. The who wants what posts are not YouTube videos. Okay. So you got your title. Um, now, if you're just starting out, by the way, take these 180 ideas, cut everything in half. Don't do 180. Do 90. Just make three months worth of content. Because, and by just starting out, I mean like you've never, you don't have a client yet. You're just getting into teaching. This is, this is like a new career, a new territory for you. Just cut everything in half. Now, if you haven't even started yet at all, like you have no content whatsoever, just create one month's worth of content. Just create 30 pieces of content. Don't overwhelm yourself with 90, let alone 180. Because if you're new, you're going to be experiencing so much growth and you're going to be changing so much the biggest learning curve, it's always at the start. So by the time six months comes around, you'll have changed so much. I learned more about the raw food diet and veganism in my first six months than I have over the past like six years. Like it was just such a period of just pure acting like a sponge, just taking in everything. I was so hungry for, for knowledge. I learned so, so much. And then once I started teaching, I learned even more because now, you know, you master what you teach. So if you're just getting into teaching and just getting into a new topic, if you make six months worth of content, you're going to look back six months from now, like, like I do with my old content. And I'm like, Oh God, I've changed so much. Especially if you're like in like the health and fitness space, if you make six worth of content now, six months from now, you may be much fitter, much healthier, much more um, presentable, if you will. The and, but old content will be coming out and it'll be like reflecting on how you are now. So you probably don't want that. So I recommend just creating 30 pieces of content to get started, test the water, see how that goes. And then you'll notice how you feel even when you see, you know, 30 days from now, a piece of content from you popping up as new that you actually created a month ago. Even that can be kind of shocking for people. Okay. But if you've been at this for a while, if you're been teaching for a while, you already, you already know that you're not really going to change your stance on a lot of things. Sure. Go ahead and create the six months worth of content because it's going to be, Super cringy seeing yourself six months ago if you're just starting out. But totally up to you. Take it as you wish. But this this also, like, I mean, yeah, this is a, this is a huge, uh, huge tip. Because I've seen content for myself pop up. And I'm like, oh, man, I don't even know if I, that content should go out anymore. Because it's like, it's kind of dated now. Um, I don't know if I believe that anymore. Like, maybe back in the day with entrepreneurship, maybe I recommended people, for example, create the course and then sell it. And then I have a video going out saying like, how to sell your first course. Well, six months later, I might realize that that's ridiculous. Why would you create a course and sell it when you could just sell it first and then create it? So that it totally like throws a wrench in, in what I'm doing. So if you're just starting out, create a month's worth. Don't even overwhelm yourself with the idea of six months. Just see how this goes. You'll feel really proud of yourself too for doing a month's worth. Next, once you're clear on, on your titles and your ideas, now you want to create all the content ideally in one sitting. So here's here are a few ways of doing it. There's a few different ways of doing it. You can go live on YouTube. This personally is my preference because I can't overthink it. I'm live. I'm in the moment, kind of like with I'm, I am with you right now. There's no way if you guys weren't here in the crowd, I'd be able to talk for an hour and a half straight, nonstop about all this stuff. And if I did talk about nonstop, I'd get kind of bored. I'd be like, God, how much time is left? But when I'm live, it's just flow, flow, flow. So it's very easy for me to just flow when I'm live. If you're scared of going live, try it. You may find that it's actually very, very helpful. To me, I get, I don't know, I'm maybe like more scared to not go live because I'm just judging myself the whole time when I'm sitting there talking to a camera. But if I'm live, I'm not judging myself. I'm like thinking like, oh, is this, is this as helpful as I can possibly make it? I'm thinking about you guys. So I like to go live and just record it all in one go. The way to do that is to have a list of all your questions that you're going to ask, uh, answer, have a list of all the topics that you're going to talk about, and then just go live and go for it. Just talk about them all, all in one sitting. And you can record that. Make sure you record that. Uh, another way is just to set a timer for 120 minutes and set your camera up and, and record. 
Now your recording time on your camera might max out at like 20 minutes, 30 minutes or something. So you might have to like click it every now and then, but you'll have to find out what the recording length is. A way to overcome that is you could buy like a, a full on like video camera. These don't really have a recording length. I mean, they might be like four hours or something. So you could just get one of these. I know a lot of people use these because they talk for like an hour or whatever. Uh, camcorder. I don't know which one's the best one to get, but you could go on YouTube, type best camcorder for YouTube. Best camcorder for YouTube. Yeah, it looks like you can get them from anywhere from like, I don't know, probably a really good one, like a thousand bucks, but yeah, a thousand bucks. Yeah, maybe 600. Those can record for forever <clears throat> or a long time. Okay, so that's another option. Another option is to get someone to interview you and you give them like all the questions to ask you. Uh, I know Doug did this. Doug created a program one time called the Perfect Health Program. Awesome program, by the way. And it was just Doug being interviewed. Fred had like, I don't know, 120 questions for Doug. He asked Doug every single like most popular question, like what about dehydrated food and what about protein and what about calcium? And then Doug would just answer like these like three to four, five minute answers. nice and condensed. And then they recorded an entire like, I don't know, it's like a three, four hour program or something, if I remember correctly, maybe two, three hours of just like golden answers for, for two, three hours. It was awesome. It probably took Doug zero willpower to sit there and answer all these 12 hours. My bad, Doug. It took Doug, uh, probably didn't require much willpower off Doug's part. He just sat there and answered the questions to the best of his ability in the shortest time period possible. So, and it went on to become like a really, really top selling program. So Doug could easily do the same thing again for creating six months worth of content. He could have someone, Doug could even come up with all the questions and say, Hey, here are the questions I want you to ask me. So that works well. Another way is to use focus mate. Um, if you find that you're like procrastinating on things, I recommend going to focus mate booking a session. I'll show you how easy it is to book a session on focus mate. I do this all the time. Focus mate. Uh, I think the default now is like a 25 minute setting. Oh no. 50 here. So you go up here to the top left and you can, you can see us 25 or 50 minutes. Let's say you're gonna do a 50 minute block. Cause that's what I'd recommend for you to film for a long period of time. And you pick a time that you want to record. Let's say you want to record at one o'clock. You just pick one o'clock here. You click continue booking, you book a session and then boom, now it's going to match me up with somebody at one o'clock. Okay. And then you go live with them and you tell them what you're going to do during that time. You say, I'm going to be recording a bunch of YouTube videos. They say, cool. I'm going to be studying for my finals. You go mute on focus mate and you go ahead and you record your stuff. You come back 15 minutes later and you tell them how you did. Another way is just to team up with someone on zoom. Like I mentioned earlier, if you guys want to do this together, then we can plan something in vegan creators and we can all get together on zoom, go on mute and then do our recording and let everyone know how we did. So team up with someone on zoom or a team of people. Optional is like, if you're going to be recording 50 YouTube videos or something in a day, you might want to have a couple of hairstyles, a couple of locations around your house, a couple of different clothing options. So you kind of change it up. So you're not looking the exact same in every single video. So for me, what I do for guys actually is if you have a beard or something, keep the beard initially record 20 videos like that, and then shave and do the next 20 videos without the beard. And here's some things, what not to do. There's, there's a good amount of tips out there. I'll just give you a couple ones. What not to do is start the video off by saying, hey, everybody. Instead, I like to start them off with like, hey, do you ever experience this problem? Or do you really want this thing, but then suffer from this thing? So mentioning the word you is really, really important. And then asking a question is really, really helpful. It, you'll increase your view rate. People will less likely to click off. If you say, hey, everybody, it feels very impersonal. It's different if you're on a live Zoom call and there's like literally everybody in the crowd. But if you're on YouTube, you want to talk to like one person. Um, and then in terms of best practices, you want to make sure you do your title and thumbnail check first in all your videos. Like I showed you on YouTube. Go see what's already working. At the start of your video, make a promise, like how it's going to help them. 
make three points. This is like a general rule of thumb. I like to have three points. This helps me like flow really, really easily. So let's go up to the top here. Let's look at our mini lesson. Uh, we said one of the mindset mini lessons was like how to think like a vegan. Okay. Well, I could now brainstorm three points for that. And the, how to think like a vegan, the three points might be um, do unto others as others would do unto you, as you'd want others to do unto you. Other one, think like a vegan is like, it's not a matter of if animals can talk, it's if they can suffer. And the other mindset for vegan might be like, is there any nutrient that I, my body needs that I can't get from plants? No. So that's how you think like a vegan. Those are like three points. Okay? I just made them up and they would make for a great video. Gives you insight into how a vegan thinks. So it helps to have a promise at the start of the video, how it's going to be helpful for them in the three points. And then lighting, lighting is key. So I uploaded a video yesterday to YouTube. First video in a while, just thought I'd get back into it. And focused on Facebook a lot. It's been very profitable, but now getting back on YouTube. And I tried filming this video elsewhere in the house. It didn't look good at all. So I went right in front of a uh, open window and, and lighting was great. So this is what it looks like. Should you go raw vegan? It's nice and well, it's well lit. Face is well lit. So, oh, why is it so low res? So, oh, because I'm screen recording. But yeah, very well lit. Like, so when it comes to your background, nobody cares about your background. They just, you shouldn't be distracting and ideally not super messy. But other than that, you're fine. Just simple, clean backdrop, but don't overthink it. I had like this, these bars. I bought like another tread, walking treadmill for, for upstairs and like the bars were in the way because you can see on the right, but I didn't care. I was like, nobody's going to care, man. I just want the message. Plus, I got like blankets on the couch and stuff like nobody cares. So don't overthink it. But lighting is very, very important. The biggest mistake I see newbies make is their lighting sucks. So do it in front of a window or just get a light. Get a light. I'll show you another example. This is just me in front of a light. So I'll show, I'll show you what I did right in this video and what I did wrong. I think this will be helpful. In this video, uh, here's my situation, my lighting situation. Okay, so I'm very well lit. I don't like how the background's not very well lit. Like I could have put some lights on the plants or something, but at least I'm really well lit. That's important. Okay, so great example. I'm lit. The background's not really lit. That's not optimal, but still, it's better than nothing. And then I'll show you one more example. Super simple lighting here. Another example is. You ever sit down? Right there. So the background's lit and I'm lit. What's the intention? And notice how I start with that do you ever? Do you ever sit down with. Right? Do you ever? And then I say, it's a good opener. Do you ever do this thing, but then struggle with this thing? Oh, you guys might not be able to hear. One sec. Change the mic. Do you ever sit down with the intention of getting into flow state with your work, but then find yourself getting distracted by everything else around you? Simple. Nothing crazy. Do you ever find yourself sitting down to get into flow state for work, but then find yourself getting distracted with everything around you? It's relatable and it's a problem. Relatable problems work really, really well for openers. Now, here's the thing about these types of videos that we're making in mass quantity here. You're not going to be scripting out your stuff like this. You're not going to be overthinking it. With, these, with this mass quantity type of work where we're sitting down and banging out 30 videos in, in an hour or something, uh, or like 60 videos an hour, you just got to get the lighting set up and you just need to answer these questions. Like, hey, today's question is this answer it. Or, Hey, if you've ever wanted to know how to do this so that you could do this, here's how really simple. Just bang it out. Don't try and like come up with like the perfect opener script. We're just aiming for quantity here, not like super high quality. And then last piece is you want to 
have some energy, bring, bring some energy. I've reviewed a lot of YouTube videos inside of our coaching program. And two of the biggest issues I see is the lighting sucks and people's energy sucks. They're like, hi. So today uh, we're going to talk about this thing. It's like, bro, you're on YouTube. You gotta keep people attention, high energy, high energy, or at least just like positive energy, but no dull shit. So this is why practice comes in. I used to be super shy, by the way. You go watch my early videos. I'm super shy. Go watch Lisa Raw Food Romance's early videos. We've like analyzed these so much. It's so funny. Go look at Raw Food Romance's first video. Go look at my first video. They're so bad because we're so shy. In a way, it's kind of cute, but we just got more confident as time went on. So the energy comes with time. And then every video should end with a call to action or have a call to action in it. And that brings me to my next point, which is you want to hire or do it yourself. I'm an intro and outro creator so that every video can have a call to action. A simple call to action is just link in description for my free book, link in description for my free course, link in description to book a call with me, comment down below for this free thing. Okay. And if, if you, uh, yeah, you don't have to put an intro outro in every single video, but if you're going to be giving away like the same thing every time, like your free intro course to mastering veganism or whatever, then yeah, throw it on there. You can get someone to do it for you for like 50 bucks should be no more than three seconds long you can put the same intro and outro on almost every video if you want but yeah call to action is just click below book a call get the free download simple don't overthink it that's step three and i'll i'll send you guys this uh document after so you can click the link and you can go get the people to build out your intro outro for you or you can build the intro outro yourself on canva you can go on canva and just grab, grab like a static image do a little animation on Canva, download that animation on Canva. There's your, there's your intro outro. Once you've recorded all your videos and you got this intro, now you can send that all to a video editor or you can do it yourself, of course. But if you're going to send it to a video editor, you can pay them like two or $3 per video. So if you get someone to like edit like, you know, hundred videos for you, you can get that for like 200 bucks. All the editing done for you is going to save you hours. You could do it yourself, but it take you a lot of time. Uh, so if you're gonna, if you are gonna do it yourself, though, use Focusmate. I do a lot of video editing using Focusmate. If I'm doing like monotonous, boring stuff like this, I use Focusmate, or I just send it to an editor. Next is, uh, by the way, I got a link here. This will link you to a bunch of video editors who are like hungry for work. So here's a, well, this is one example of a guy. But. Uh, Got 64 other people right here who are like ready to work. This guy works for five bucks an hour. For five bucks an hour, yo, he could probably make, he could probably make your videos for like 50 cents, like a dollar each. This guy right here, a dollar each. And if you don't like the work, then you don't need to keep hiring him. You can pay him for like five videos and see how it goes. Make, get this guy to make five videos for you. Super simple. All he's doing is cutting out. The next question, adding the intro and outro, super simple work. Five bucks an hour, this guy could make videos for you for like a dollar an hour. So I'll change that to $1. Okay. Uh, next is thumbnail. So this part may be a little bit more work. So it's probably like five, $10 per thumbnail if it's a really good thumbnail, or you can just do it yourself on Canva. I do recommend doing this. In the past, I just skipped the thumbnail. Videos didn't get views. And then as soon as I added the thumbnail, the views went way up. So it's from personal experience. I know that having a thumbnail gets way more views. It's going to cost me an extra five or 10 bucks, but it's going to get me more views. Those views turn into clients. It's worth it. So either go on Canva or hire someone to make thumbnails for you. I'm sure you could like order bulk and you could get them to do, uh, you might be able to get a discount and get like $4 per thumbnail. If you order a hundred or something at a time, uh, if you're going to do it yourself, Canva and then focus mate to stay focused. Step six. It's the last step. Uh, Raj, why do thumbnails cost more than video editing? Because video editing is so simple. All they're doing is cutting the end, cutting the start, slapping on the intro, slapping on the outro, exporting it. They can do it in like less than a minute, maybe two minutes. Whereas a thumbnail, it's going to take like at least 20, 30 minutes to make a decent one. But if someone works for five bucks an hour, I don't know if anyone makes thumbnails for five bucks an hour, but if they do, you could get them for $2 and 50 cents each. So you got to find someone who you like their style, 
I'll put a link here for uh, some thumbnail creators. But you, you, if you're going to do this, though, send them examples of thumbnails you already like and say, hey, make mine look like that. That is a huge tip. And same with the video editor. Send them a video and be like, hey, I want my video to look like this. And it's just going to be a super simple video. Of like, here's the intro. Here's the main thing. Here's the outro. Done. Because, again, this is just quantity, quantity, quantity here. Step six is find someone then to upload it and schedule it all for you or do it yourself. Here, again, you can pay them $1 to $2 per upload. If someone's working for five bucks an hour, though, you could get them to probably do 50 cents per upload. Very, very cheap. Uh, and if you can do it yourself, use focusmate.com, get her done. So, yeah, it, it, if you don't know how to schedule it on YouTube, just go and Google type how to upload a video on schedule on YouTube. It's very easy. So, if you want to do this all together, go through all six steps together, or at least go through the filming stage, right? If you want to go through this filming stage together, where we go through and execute on all our ideas, uh, make sure you're in Vegan Creators and we'll do that together. If you're not, go to vegancreators.net. And now, like I said at the start, if you stay to the end, which is now, I'll show you the one piece of content that's made me more money than anything else. Any guesses what that is, by the way? One piece of content. Like if, if I didn't, if I, if I couldn't make any content, I would just make this one and send all the traffic in the world to it. Yeah, it's my webinar story video. Exactly, exactly. So you can visit tedcarclass.com to see what that looks like. But what I did, the, way, the reason it looks like so professional, it's really easy. I kind of cheated. Um, it's a cool hack. But what I did, I should do a whole class just showing how I did, but I'll just tell you. You might understand if I tell you. I wrote down everything I wanted to say in the video on a Google Doc, similar to this. I just wrote down everything I want to say, the intro, the main points, the story, the offer, everything. Just wrote it all down, like literally word for word, because I knew I was going to speak it word for word using this microphone to record. Never ended up using this mic. I just filmed it with my iPhone. But anyways, goes to show you don't even need a fancy mic. Just use your iPhone. I wrote down everything I want to say on a Google Doc. I transferred that Google Doc over to Google Slides. So now I had like a slideshow for every sentence, basically. And then I recorded myself speaking those slides. And then I had like your basic slideshow webinar, which is what everybody has. And then I put it in the editor and I went to go like start removing like the mistakes that I made because I make a lot of mistakes if you're trying to record something perfectly. First take, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. So I just was in the editor and I was deleting all these mistakes I made. And then there was a certain part in the webinar where I talked about driving a car or something. And I was like, oh, that'd be really cool to have like a video of me driving a car. So I threw a video to on top of like that slideshow. So it was like slide, 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 video, me driving a car, then back to slide, slide, slide. And I was like, oh, that video is sweet. And it makes the slides like really boring. I was like, what if I make it like majority video and like a little bit slides? So then I threw in like way more videos on top of all the slides and it was so good. And I was like, well, this is sweet, but there's still all those like leftover slides. I'm going to get rid of all the slides. So I just started putting ton of B-roll on top of all these slides. And then what ended up happening was the B-roll felt really inauthentic because it wasn't my B-roll. It was like some stock royalty free B-roll. And I was like, ah, B-roll is sweet, but it's not me. So then I just hired my cousin to come film me doing stuff. Like I'm like, bro, film me driving my car. I'm like, film me on my computer, film me eating an apple, film me swimming in the water. And then I threw those clips on top and it was just like ah, magnificent, especially if I add a little bit of music in the background, it was amazing. So it was so good that like professional YouTubers are reaching out to me. They're like, dude, great video. The dudes from um, Cowspiracy and Seaspiracy reached out to me. They're like, dude, great video. We want to work with you. It got like crazy amount of publicity and people like really put me on like a pedestal now because I had this high quality professional video that was actually so easy to make. So script, I spoke it, I added some B-roll, added some background music, done. Now, the reason it was so good, it wasn't just because the B-roll, it wasn't just because the music or anything. It was actually like the story in the script. That's what made it so good. So I worked really, really hard on making that story really good. And so if you want help with your story to make your story very, very captivating, I'm doing a storytelling master clinic in two weeks inside of Vegan Creators. 
If you want to attend, type story in the chat. Make sure you're part of Vegan Creators and you'll get that story clinic, no charge. Otherwise, there'll be a cost to attend. It's going to be freaking awesome. We're going to dive deep into the psychology of telling a really, really powerful story that actually sells so that all you have to do is send traffic to that one piece of content and let that do all the selling for you. Hopped on a sales call yesterday with a girl. I said, hey, how'd you find me? She said, oh, I was on your Instagram and I watched your highlight of your story and I booked a call. It was the most effortless book a call ever. And this happens all the time. So I'll show you. If you go to my story, it's called my story. And I just took my webinar. It's like 20 minutes long. I threw it into my story and it starts out here. See, it's just B-roll of me doing stuff. Instead of slides, it's little clips. Eating an apple, me at my computer, some stock footage. I, I put uh, subtitles too, because subtitles really increase the, the view rate. More stock, footage of me. Um, me in the water, floating in the water. So just drone footage. Yeah, Vanna says it was your story that got me too. So story is really, really powerful and it doesn't feel like selling at all because you're not. You're literally just telling a story and people are sold before you ever even get to the offer. This is all story, 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 story. And then eventually I get to the offer part like way over here. People watch this whole thing. It's 20 minutes. It's on my Instagram. Um, this, the offer is like here. It's like 60% of the way in. And the, the offer is like, hey, book a call if you want help getting these results. So people go and book a call and I show more footage of us being us and working on the computer. So very, very cool. But yeah, if you want a masterclass on that, then I'll see you there in a couple of weeks. So that was that. We just covered how to make six months worth of content in one day. Although I don't recommend making six worth, six months worth of content in a day. I recommend cutting it down to, down to three months or even just a month if you're just starting out. And if you want to just focus on one piece of content above all else, and you don't want to make a whole bunch of content, although I do recommend making a whole bunch of content, if you just want one piece of content, focus on your webinar and make your story really, really powerful. Because if somebody watches that thing, they're going to be, they're going to be sold before you even make your offer. So that's that. That's a wrap. Any questions, post them in the Q and a happy to get to them. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Oh, sorry, Jason. I didn't see that. Uh, Doug called action in every outreach. Yes. Well, not every outreach. I mean, one outreach might be like, my dog died. You're not going to do like book a call. If you're interested, some dude did this. It was so bad. He's like, he sent out an email and he talked about how his, his, his daughter was in an abusive relationship and she just got like punched in the face or something. And then he's like, and then it made me realize how grateful I am to be an entrepreneur because I have enough money to now protect her. If you want to become a successful entrepreneur, book a call with me. And I was like, dude, that's so bad. You like used your daughters getting punched in the face to say book a call. That's brutal. So no, not called action every outreach, but um, most outreaches. Yeah. Do you have suggestions on good YouTube names or website names? Um, I don't know what you mean by that, Jason. You mean names for you to use for you? Just use your name, Jason Manning. All right, uh, guys. Here's what I would love you to do. Here's what I would love you to do. Uh, I did this last time and it seemed to go very, very well. So if you found this class helpful, if you could go in the Facebook group, the Vegan Creators Facebook group, I'll even post the link, and just comment about like your key takeaway from the today. Talk about if how you liked it. Um, and if you recommend people get the replay, that would be awesome. Um, we're going to sell the replay, of course, but we want people to be aware that this is actually an awesome program. So if you could do that, that would be so awesome. If you got something from it, great. Uh, yeah, happy to take any questions. You can post them in the Q&A. 
and we'll get to those. Edith, any advice on starting YouTube besides just get started? I do well on Instagram, but I also want to start YouTube and looking for my tips. Yeah, so the tips I gave you are all going to be really helpful, like having a plan. Other than that, I mean, once you know what you're going to talk about, get an idea of where you're going to shoot the videos. Like for me, I like to shoot it in front of my window. Other than that, I mean, you're probably going to want to create a header for your channel and get a profile picture in there. But no, nah, there's no other tip besides, oh, here's a tip, I guess. Go and find the kind of videos that you like to watch and, 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 like under, and then make that like your gold standard, like your true north. Be like, I want to make videos like her. I want to make videos like him. And then make that your like standard and then try to make videos like them. Can you send the replay? Yes, everyone will get a replay if you signed up. Uh, how do we get the links to the video? As you, yeah, I'll send you that document. Thanks. I'll send you the document plus the replay. Any tech stuff? Like, can you use my phone? Yeah, you can use your phone. What setting do I record in? That really doesn't matter when you're just starting out. What set, I don't even know what setting. I just use the default setting. I have no idea what setting I use. I just pick up my phone, hit record. Yeah, Edith, so my tip for you is don't overthink it. Like, it's funny because you're like, can you give me any other tips besides just get started? And when someone asks that question and then follows it up with the kind of questions you're asking, the ultimate piece of advice is just get started. Like, I have no idea what setting I use. Uh, I mean, the only tip I gave myself was like, dude, just do it. Just make the video. Make your first video. Make your first. That's my advice. Just make your first video. Make your first video. And get it reviewed. Like, uh, you can go through Tube School too. If you guys want to make really good videos, I created Tube School. It's a, it's a, it's a $97 program, but you get your money back if you submit the video. So, and in it, as you go through that, I teach you how to make epic videos. And at the end, you get a private one-on-one -on -one with me to review your video. So if you want to make epic videos and you want me to personally critique it at no cost, you can sign up for Tube School and I will critique your video and make sure it's really, really good. Everyone who's gone through Tube School comes out the other end, a way better video creator. So I'll post the link in there, tubeschool.com. Check it out. And yeah, it's like free video coaching from me. So probably going to shut that down soon because it takes up a good amount of my time. But if you want to utilize it while it's still up, by all means, tubeschool.com. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Amanda, you rock. Happy to have you on my Spotify team soon. <laughs> Azaria, peace out. Sherry, peace. Everyone else, much love. Adios. Again, if you could, please post comment in the Facebook group, letting everyone know what you got from it. If you thought it was helpful, that'd be much, much, much appreciated. Adios. Have a good Saturday. And I'll see you in two Saturdays from now to go over the storytelling masterclass. All right. You rock. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Before you leave, it's only, I mean, some of you already left, but while I have you here captive, if you could, if you want to give me like, this is, I've never done this before. If you want to give me like some feedback on like how I could be better next time, you can post it in the Q and A or the chat. Chat is public, Q and A is private. If you post in the Q and A, I won't read it out loud. I won't read your name. Uh, if you want to give me some private like feedback right now, you can post in the Q and A. And if you want to give public feedback in the chat, That'd be sweet. I always want to improve. So, and while you're here, how could I be better next time? Because I want to do these like every two weeks. I want to make sure they're really, really good. I know Jason gave me a tip. He said, can you zoom in more on the screen so it's bigger font? I apologize. I'll do that next time. See, how else would I have known to do that had he not told me, right? And if you don't have any negative feedback for me, just type no feedback in the chat. Put something natural in the background, not plastic. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, dude, there's no light down here. They would die. I tried that before. I would like bring plants up and down stairs and I was like, oh man. But uh, I'll try to make them look less plastic somehow. Amy has to think. Okay, Amy, I'm looking forward to your feedback. Feel free to send me a private message with some feedback. Bigger font, no feedback, love it. Cool. Bigger font. 
what I liked is that you got started. Oh yeah. Last question. What do you like most? You guys aren't very helpful with negative feedback. So what do you like most? What was your number one key takeaway? Most helpful, favorite part of the whole program or whole class today. Number one, favorite part, feedback, feedback. Thanks, Darlene. Topic ideas. Energy was great. Thanks, dude. I'm about to go do a thousand squats. <laughs> Training for the Guinness. I'm going to go run. I think it's raining, actually. I can hear rain. That'll make it funner. I'm going to go run and then do a thousand squats outside. Uh, the coach, how interactive it is, business model. You gave us feedback on our ideas. That was fun. So much information. I like the way you listen, listed each step. Cool. It's on the outside. Oh, thanks, Arlene. Sweet. I guess on Langley. Sweet. Okay. The phases and steps within, interactive part. Cool. Awesome. Well, I guess that's it. If you guys want to uh, do something awesome today, go do some push ups, go do some squats, go for a run, go shake it up. You've been sitting for a long time, two hours. All right, out of here. Peace out. See you in vegan creators and post in the Facebook group. That'd be great. Thanks. Bye. Much love. Ciao.